So now on to number four on the list, which is angina. So angina, strictly speaking, means cardiac chest pain due to the heart being strained. However, we often use angina more broadly to refer to any of the symptoms that can arise from the heart being strained. So the three main symptoms individuals can feel when their heart is under strain are a central chest pain, chest tightness, and breathlessness. So two major examples of conditions that can strain the heart are coronary artery disease, or CAD, and valvular heart disease, or VHD. Coronary artery disease is when the coronary arteries, which are the arteries that supply the cardiac muscle with blood, become affected by atherosclerosis. This causes them to become narrower, and therefore the blood supply to the cardiac muscle is reduced. The cardiac muscle has to continue to work and do its job despite this reduced blood supply. But it's not happy about this and it can give rise to these cardiac symptoms, so chest pain, chest tightness, breathlessness, what we would call angina. These symptoms are going to get worse the more the heart has to work, so at rest they might not be too bad, but if you're going to exert yourself, then of course the heart's going to have to work harder and its blood supply isn't up to it, and therefore these symptoms are going to get worse during periods of exertion. Valvular heart disease is disease of the heart valves. Now, there are obviously four heart valves, and all of them can be diseased. The major one that I'll talk about to give an example is aortic stenosis. So, the aortic valve is the valve from the left ventricle into the aorta, and it ensures that when the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta, that the blood doesn't backflow into the left ventricle. Now, as people get older, that valve can become calcified, and this calcification means that it's much harder and much more rigid and less flexible than it was when the person was younger. This means that it takes much more effort, much more pressure to make it open, and even once it has opened, it's not going to open as wide as it once did. This condition is called aortic stenosis, narrowing of the aortic valve. Now, aortic stenosis makes the job of the left ventricle much more difficult because when that aortic valve was young and flexible, the left ventricle could easily eject its blood out of that valve. Now that it's calcified and much more rigid, it becomes much more difficult for the left ventricle to push the blood out through it. So this again is a condition that's going to lead to the job of a huge great chunk of heart muscle, the left ventricular muscle, becoming much more difficult. And again, it's going to continue on doing its job, but it's not going to be happy about it, and it's potentially going to give rise to symptoms. And these symptoms could include chest pain, chest tightness, or breathlessness. And again, when these symptoms occur, we can refer to them as anginal symptoms. Now, I just want to say that, strictly speaking, angina does mean chest pain in the context of coronary artery disease. However, often in medicine we use it more widely to refer to any one of these symptoms, chest pain, chest tightness or breathlessness, cardiac symptoms that are arising from the heart muscle not being happy due to some sort of heart disease, whether it be coronary artery disease or more broadly such as valvular heart disease. More correctly, I should probably call these cardiac symptoms. Anyway, bisoprolol can be used to treat these cardiac symptoms that are arising from these heart diseases. And the way this is going to work is that it's going to tone down the sympathetic stimulation to the heart. And of course, that's going to mean that the heart's going to beat less quickly and less strongly, and therefore is going to be working less hard. And this is going to be true whether you're at rest or whether you're exerting yourself at the moment. In either scenario, bisoprolol is going to reduce by a certain amount how hard your heart is working. And therefore, it's going to make the likelihood that you will experience any of these cardiac symptoms less likely. So bisoprolol is often called an anti-anginal because it can be used to treat angina. 
So finally, let's turn to cardiac remodeling. So what does cardiac remodeling mean? So we talked earlier about how persistent sinus tachycardia or persistent fast atrial fibrillation can lead to a gradual wearing down of the heart muscle and can lead to it gradually becoming weaker over time. And we referred to that as a cardiomyopathy. That is actually an example of cardiac remodeling. That gradual degeneration of the heart muscle into a weaker cardiomyopathic state, that is remodeling. And we talked about how we want to put them on bisoprolol to rate control them to prevent that remodeling from happening. So loads of other heart conditions can also lead to a gradual cardiac remodeling into a cardiomyopathic state. And bisoprolol is cardioprotective in these cases as well and is going to slow down the progression of the remodeling. So for example, in coronary artery disease that we've just discussed, the heart muscle is having to continue to do its job despite reduced blood supply. Again, this can wear it out and gradually it can degenerate into a weaker cardiomyopathic state. And again, this makes the individual much more likely to develop heart failure if they've developed a cardiomyopathy. For valvular heart disease, let's take the example of aortic stenosis again. So that's going to make the job of the left ventricle much more difficult. It's going to have to pump blood out into the aorta against the resistance of this stenotic aortic valve. Again, that if it happens for years and years and years, is going to gradually wear down the left ventricle. And again, it can gradually remodel, it can degenerate into a weaker cardiomyopathic state. So overall, loads of cardiac diseases can wear down the cardiac muscle and result in cardiac remodeling. If you think that an individual is at risk of cardiac remodeling, you can put them on bisoprolol to protect them from this. Bisoprolol is going to reduce sympathetic stimulation to the cardiac muscle and thereby reduce how hard the cardiac muscle is going to have to work and is therefore going to slow down the progression of cardiac remodeling. And again, the reason you want to do this is because developing a cardiomyopathy is a massive risk factor for developing heart failure, i.e. fluid overload from cardiac problems. This is especially important if you've got another cardiac disease such as coronary artery disease or valvular heart disease because each of these themselves can lead to heart failure. So if you've got these and you've got a cardiomyopathy, you're then at much more increased risk of developing heart failure. So for these conditions, you can see that there is two reasons that you want the patient to be taking the bisoprolol. One, to relieve the symptoms of the condition, but also to try and prevent any cardiac remodeling that might occur due to the condition and to try and protect them from cardiomyopathy and heart failure in the future. So overall, bisoprolol is a wonderful drug. Cutting down sympathetic stimulation to the heart, in most people, this is a good thing to do and is going to improve the health of their heart.